Everybody still see this, right? Okay. Um, <coughs> so what I've been doing this entire summer is trying to study what affects um, like an atomic electron in a confinement um, using its basically the rock particle and the spher spher spherically symmetric potential. And um, so there was a recent publication not too long ago by, um, it was called The Exact Solution of Compressed Hydrogen Atom um, in the American Journal of Physics. And what they did was they took a spher spherically uh, symmetric potential like I did and they confined it to different levels of the Bohr radius. So they did like half the Bohr radius, the Bohr radius, you know, even bigger than all the way up down, uh, down to infinity. And they used the Schrodinger equation instead of the Dirac equation, which above Bohr radius and, you know, far out, it doesn't really matter that much. But when they went down to the half the Bohr radius and even less than that, you're causing the uncertainty in kinetic energy to be very, very large. So you want to use relativistic uh, units and components. So the Dirac equation would be a lot better for this. And um, so the mathematics behind it are very complicated. I spent my whole summer basically trying to learn some of it. So you have this uh, <coughs> these couple of radial equations for the Dirac equation. I'm not going to go through the whole derivation of it. But you have energy, and rest energy, and potential W. And you make your potential W, actually, um, minus C e squared over R, which is your normal potential for electron proton. And then you add some like constant potential sphere outside of everything. And uh, you can just make some conditions and say, oh, when you know the, the radius between the electron and the nucleus is greater than the radius of the sphere outside everything, then you can say that this potential zero doesn't really matter anymore. But inside the what we call big R, it's subject to this potential, and this one doesn't matter a whole lot. And uh, so not going through all the steps to find a solution, you end up getting these two couple equations, which by the way, you can tell are very long. Um, you end up getting what's called high confluent hypergeometric functions. And they're solutions to a certain type of equation called the Kummer equation. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. But uh, it's a certain type of differential equation and uh, so, and then you, and then we have, those are, so actually going back, these are just the solutions for, these two right here are just the solutions for R less than R, which is your big confinement radius. So the what, that, and that solution is well known. This, you can find this anywhere online, but what we were interested in is what is the solution for R greater than R using as constant potential, which was, you would think it'd be easier, but it's, it was actually a little bit more complicated. And um, so what Bob Deck did was try to come up with what he thought would be the form of the solution for this. And you end up getting uh, addition of spherical Bessel functions and spherical Neumann functions. And after going through everything, you get, we, we take a ratio of these two equations together, and then you take the two solutions for little r greater than r, and you take the ratio of those two solutions as well, and you end up getting this mess right here once again. And this w, we have these parameters, w over kappa and epsilon over kappa. Epsilon is our energy value, kappa is mc squared, w is our constant potential, and you can bas basically vary these things to s and play around with them in like Mathematica to see what you come up with. And, uh, and you want to set both of these equations equal to each other and try to find a root for where those equations equal each other. And so that's where we run into a bit of a problem because what we were getting was negative energy values and uh, that 
I mean, mathematically, you can say, fine, that's, that's just the answer, but physically, that doesn't make any sense. Because you have to, you also have to take in the rest energy of the electron, which is 0.511 MeV, or, or just 0.511 MeV. And so you add that to your potential and your kinetic energy, whatever that may be. And we're not really sure whether the, uh, the total energy of a confined particle should actually be less than the rest energy or greater because we're not really sure what the kinetic energy plays out to be. And so I just plotted just the base, some basic things in mathematics that both of these functions, the ratios that we got, and where they intersect each other, which is obviously a negative energy value, and it doesn't make much sense. So what we want to do continuing, what I want to do continuing in the next semester is Basically, see, I don't think the program is wrong. Dr. Marr looked over at it extensively. I looked over it extensively. And everything I've listed is pretty good. Um, so maybe there's something analytically wrong with the equations themselves. And, uh, you know, I just, there's, there's a lot to learn relativistic quantum mechanics in just a few weeks of the summer. But, um, so yeah, I mean, I only had ten weeks, and I never really never even touched with the Dirac equation before this. But like, I, you know, I, it doesn't seem like it did a lot. But just trying to learn the the derivations of everything, putting all these equations together, and eventually come out with an answer that doesn't make sense. It's kind of disappointing. But um, I guess that's kind of what theoretical physics. So yeah, I spent my whole ten weeks at a computer and a chalkboard. So, um, but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to work actually with Bob Deck next semester and uh, see if we can maybe come up with maybe a different result. Um, I noticed, I know that in this slide earlier, I originally had, I didn't have this absolute value sign, and what was happening was is, for some values of E, if you wanted to find it, you'd get a negative and a positive, and of course, you have a negative number and a radical, you're getting some imaginary answer, which doesn't make any more bit of sense. And some other problems that, why we might think the energy might be less is, then the rest energy is because you have this 1 minus epsilon squared over k squared. And if you remember, the k squared is the rest energy. So in order for this radical not to produce an imaginary number, you want to have this ratio be less than 1 because there's a 1 right here. So it's a, it's a topic of interest that's kind of been uh, discussed. And there's people that want to know what confining atomic atoms do like with reference to like quantum dots and different things like that so uh, and obviously I don't want to try to solve this thing by hand either I don't know how anybody did it back in the day but um, so yeah future work um, try, maybe try to analyze the algebra and um, continue to use Mathematica I got a year's worth of it thanks Rick um, and you know, the, the other unlikely scenario is that there's no solution at all, but I can't see that being the case. Just, I don't want to go that route. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, that would be the easy answer. I'd say, oh, there's That's no the solution. theoretical physics one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess they don't. I guess there's no solutions. We're just making anything up. Um, is there any questions from anything? The, uh, so this W here, yeah, that, that's interesting. That creature, do you do you play with that a lot to adjust it? And yeah, I like to see like you can have like a weak confinement, something that you know the energy of the electron can, you know, overcome, or you can make it a strong confinement, you maybe two, three, four times what the uh, rest energy would be. And another thing we did was we didn't uh, we wanted to put this. Say we made this zero, yeah, and we move the radius way out, say like, you know, Bohr radius is, you know, 0.529 angstrom or something like that. 
So we want to, we made the radius like three or four hundred nanometers to the point where the potential from the, the nucleus doesn't, you know, bear effect at all. And so we wanted to see if we could actually get back the energy value you think we would get back is basically a free electron. And we were still getting a negative answer, so, you know, I, I'm not quite sure why that is. But we, we did play with those W values. We can play with the W, the radius, you know, just to play around with things to see what we get. Uh, well, a slight clarification, you, you got your basic equation by matching the solution to a small r and larger r and Right, yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, that was the other thing I forgot to mention was is that in order to set those equations equal to each other, you want to have the wave function continuous between smaller r and greater r, as you know, just for a basic particle in a box scenario. So that's how we could take those ratios and set them equal to each other. That was kind of a thing we could do. So when it was continuous, also the first derivative was continuous or just? Yeah, you can use, you do use like the recursion relations and all sorts of things, yeah. Have any questions? No more. Any more questions? All right. Thanks a lot.